Welcome to another school budget update. We're bringing you these bi-weekly presentations so that you have an understanding of the school budget as we move through budget season. We know that it's very early in the season, but I believe that education and full transparency will help the process. I'm Carol Cavanaugh, the school superintendent. As you know, we've talked an awful lot about the overcrowding in our schools. On Wednesday, October 9th, I happened to be in the high school very early in the morning at 7.35 a.m. and I snapped a couple of pictures so that you could get a sense of where we're housing students during study hall time. If you take a look at the picture on the screen, you will see that we have students who are housed in the library and in that photo you probably see about a dozen students. This only gives you a portion of the library, it doesn't give you the entire rest of, of the room. But if you step outside that room, in the, in the lobby area, you can see that you have some high top tables there where there are probably another dozen students. And then if you look at this final photograph, you'll see that in the cafeteria, there are probably another 40 or 50 students. What I'm telling you is that first period of the day on Wednesday, October 9th, we had about 75 students for whom there was no classroom space available for study hall time. I also want to talk to you a little bit more about enrollment. Every time I'm before you, I show you these graphs. We are currently at a net of 269 students for the 1920 school year. So what does it mean when we have 269 students? I'd like to take a look at the Elmwood School, for example. So currently in the Elmwood School, we have 257 second graders and we are housing them now in 12 classrooms which means we have about 21 and a half students in each one of those classrooms uh, so what you can infer is that some of the classrooms have 20 some have 22 some may be as high as 23. as we move those second graders forward to third grade we are going to have to create another classroom so we will have 13 third grade classrooms next year in fy20 if you look at the numbers for first grade, you're going to see that we have 297 first graders. They are now housed in 13 classrooms, and we have almost 23, 24 in each one of those classrooms. That's too many. So in those 13 classrooms, as we move those children forward from first grade to second, we are going to need to create another classroom, which means we will have at least 14 second grade classrooms and 13 second, third grade classrooms next year. That's a total of 27 regular classrooms. Currently, Elmwood has 26 regular classrooms, no more than that. But we use some of those regular classrooms for our L students. Right now, we have two teachers who teach in one of those classrooms, and they have a divider down the middle of the room, but essentially there is simultaneous sort of concurrent teaching going on, two teachers, two different groups of students. We can't take those students out of there for next year. And we can't because next year, as we look at the number of students in our district, we will probably have 100 English language learners at the Elmwood School. That will mean that we'll need an additional faculty member to support those students, but we will also need additional space. What I'm saying to you is that we will need at least two modular, if not three modular classrooms on the Elmwood site next year. And those come with a significant cost to our capital budget. I think we need to look at how those um, modular classrooms are going to be placed in these sites. And I think we have to face the reality that those modular classrooms are going to be necessary to house the number of students we have in the Hopkinton Public Schools. I know also when I come before you, I tell you that we're going to have to hire more regular classroom teachers and more L teachers. But as we add classrooms, I think it's important for people to understand how that adds up in FTEs in some of the related arts. So what you're seeing on the screen right now are the numbers for Hopkins for next year. We've already had a budget meeting with Principal Vanessa Bolello at Hopkins, and what she is predicting is that she will need to add 0.4 to wellness and PE, 0.1 to music, 0.2 to art, and 0.2 to adjustment counseling. That's really how we get that additional 1.0 FTE. Now, I know people are probably wondering, do you really need additional adjustment counselors or guidance counselors? The recommendation for guidance counselors and adjust adjustment counselors, counseling services in general, 
are 250 students to one counselor. Currently at the Hopkins School, we have 322 students to each counselor, 322 to one. Next year, if we add that 0.2 of a counselor, if we have 620 students at Hopkins, and that's the number that we are predicting, uh, we need to think that we are going to have about 310 students to every one counselor. We also need to think about the fact that the MSBA has a recommended square footage for public school buildings and the number of students that we have in those public school buildings. Currently, we have three buildings that are falling short. Elmwood is actually short 20,000 square feet. Hopkins is short 12,000 square feet. And the high school is currently short 30,000 square feet. And these are recommended numbers. And perhaps that's why you, know, you look at, at those early pictures in this presentation and you see our students who are housed in the library at high tops, in our lobby area, in the cafeteria for um, periods such as study halls. One thing that I think uh, will be very helpful for the public to think about is this. In the past three years in the Hopkinton Public Schools, we have welcomed over 500 students. The year is 2019. If we turn the clock back five years, 500 students would have been the number of students that we would have had at the Elmwood School and at the Hopkins School. Essentially, we have added an entire elementary school's worth of children to our public school district. We've added the same number of kids we would have had at Hopkins or at Marathon or at Center or at Elmwood several years ago. However, it's really important to note that those buildings have about 24, 25, 26 classrooms available. Although we've taken in 500 students, we have not added a single classroom in this district, not a single classroom space anywhere in the district. And so what we've done with these 500 students is we have put them into as many classrooms as we can find. We're getting much bigger class sizes than are desirable, as you've seen from the slide um, earlier in this presentation. I'd also like to go back to that enrollment slide for a moment. And if you think about how many kids we have taken into grades two and grade three this year, it's 32 and 30 respectively. And that is a net gain. I'm sorry, that's, that's the a number of students who were approved. And we've only lost four or six. So we are exceeding 25 in terms of our net gain. If that happens to us again next year, our class sizes are not going to differ very much even when we add two modular classrooms to the Elmwood site. Given our enrollment numbers, and I think that this is a very important slide for people to be attentive to, our schools are going to need at least two classrooms, if not more at Elmwood. And the question there becomes, can we house three or four modular classrooms there? Or really, is there such a space constraint that we could only put two on that site? We definitely need four modular classrooms at Hopkins, and you can put those modular classrooms on that site because you can purchase two-story modulars. And finally, I'm advocating for at least six classrooms at Hopkinton High School. As you may know, we have a capacity study that's being conducted. The preliminary results will be back to us in October. The final results will be back to us in November. Those results will be made public um, immediately so that people in Hopkinton can see what, what's very important um, in terms of our public schools and the growth that we have here. I'm looking forward to getting that capacity study. I hope that you will continue to follow these presentations so that you understand the enormity of our capital budget asks this year. When we are asking for two classrooms at Elmwood, four classrooms at Hopkins, and six at the high school, and I am sure that Marathon Elementary School, although we opened our doors a year ago, is not far in the distance, uh, we are going to need to put a lot of money and resources behind our public schools and just the physical plants and their infrastructures. I, Hope to see you as you continue to follow our budget process, and I thank you for tuning into this presentation. Mm -hmm.